Yeah, we we you mentioned uh, the the contracts that need to be worked on this off season here with Jared Goff and with Amon Ross St. Brown, and we saw some movement in the free agent market with receivers, with players being franchised or just signing signing deals, and maybe it kind of sets up where that that basement level is for St. Brown, and and we've heard that there's movement on that front. But why haven't we heard? Can you talk about that first of all, and then secondly, why haven't we heard anything on the Jared Goff front at this point? Yeah, well, St. Brown. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly where they stand. Obviously, uh, his agent and, and the Lions met last week. Um, you know, Brad Holmes. He left the combine early, so I don't even know that Brad was was part of that that meeting. Um, but you know, Brad's not the one that that handles all the contract negotiations, so it wasn't necessary that he be there for some of those discussions. Um, you know, I fully expect Amon Ra to get a deal that pays him, you know, twenty seven or so million dollars a year. That'd be a little bit more than Mike Evans, that'd be a little bit more than Cooper Cup. Um, you know, I don't know that there's a, a ton else to work out there, right? But he's gonna be the next receiver domino that falls, I would think so at least. He's gonna he'll get his deal before Justin Jefferson, before Jamar Chase. That would be my expectation. So I think, you know, the St. Brown thing could happen at some point here. I don't know that it's imminent, but you know, um let's say maybe before the draft, right? That wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Jared Goff, look, you know, I I asked Brad this at the Combine. He has a a roster bonus of $5 million due next week. And, you know, maybe on some level it just makes sense for the Lions to do that deal before that's due just so they they can roll all that that money into a new contract. But, you know, the reality is is, is that that's going to get done at some point too. And, you know, you look at Brad's history of doing some of these deals – um, he hasn't done them until the summer with, with some of the past, you know, guys that he's had that he wanted to resign. Frank Ragnow was right after the draft, but there's no real impetus to doing this now unless you really want to avoid paying that $5 million roster bonus to, to Jared Goff next week. I, I'm not, I, I want to make sure I heard you. You, you said th- as of the Goff contract, did, did I hear you clearly say that's going to get done, meaning this contract is going to happen with Jared Goff, no question? Yeah, I'd be surprised if it didn't. I mean, I think the Lions are – are fully invested in Jared Goff at this point as their their quarterback of the future. I think, you know, Jared wants to be here. Um, look, again, I don't know how, how close this is, so maybe I should qualify that a little bit and, and um, you know, say we'll, we'll see. But um, I think there's, um, you know, I think both sides would like for this to happen. And when that, when that's the case, that, that usually, that usually happens before so, long. So it being quiet is no reason to feel antsy. Yeah, I've described wouldn't. myself as not antsy, but adjacent to antsy. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry about that. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I think um, you know, there's. Uh, it's sort of the same thing, right? Where there's the Lions had a long season, so they just sort of got into their off-season plans and, and some of those meetings in February, and this is the first time we've had to, to deal with that. And so that's a good thing, obviously. But you know, there's these things take time to to work out, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't be worried in the least that we haven't heard anything about how close they are because uh, this definitely is one that you know. I would I would be surprised if it didn't happen before the season. Okay, uh, a couple others that I don't know if they're going to be cap casualties or they can keep them. Jonah Jackson, what's your sense? What's going to happen with Jonah Jackson? Yeah, we just saw today uh, Ezra Cleveland, uh, guard for the Jaguars, got a new deal. I think that was about nine or ten million dollars. You know, if the, the reports are, are right. Um, look, the Lions they need to keep one of those two guards. I would think Jonah Jackson and, and Graham Glasgow. You know, to me, Graham's a little bit cheaper, um, maybe a little more versatile. So maybe he's the guy that stays. Um, you know, I know Jonah just from having talked to him, not just this year, but over the course of his time in Detroit. You know, he'd love to be in Detroit, but he's a young guy. He, there's there's probably some teams out there that are going to pay him. I don't know that, that he's going to stick around in Detroit. But, um, yeah, I do expect the Lions to bring back at least one of those guards. And Josh Reynolds. You know, that's another one. I, I was talking to someone yesterday, and I mentioned this, you know, that, that Josh Reynolds could get like 7 or $8 million, or, or that's sort of what he's looking for. And they were like, whoa, that, that much? Well, you look at what Khalif Raymond got last year. He got about $6 million, and Khalif was your, your number four receiver. And granted, he returned punts, but, you know, Josh Reynolds is, um, if you want him back as your number three receiver, that, that might be what he costs. And, uh, you know, I, maybe the Lions would, would balk at that that price a little bit, but – um, that's one that, you know, maybe he, he hits free agency and they, they see what happens. And, but the Lions certainly need a number three receiver, another veteran receiver to keep in that room um, for after Amon Ra and, and Jamison Williams. And so um, I do think, you know, Josh Reynolds could be back. I know that, I know there's some interest on his side, at least, in, in returning to Detroit. A couple of signings that happened uh, 
the, earlier this week that may have raised some eyebrows, bringing back Emmanuel Mosley and a one-year deal, and then Shane Zilstra gets a deal. Does that mean Brock Wright is the odd man out? No, no, the Lions will tender Brock Wright or bring him back. You know, in fact, I think there was a report today that, that they, they had tendered him, okay. um, you know, as a restricted free agent. You know, the Zilstra thing, he was a, an exclusive rights free agent. So that's just so everyone out there knows, right, exclusive rights free agents. You just basically have to offer them a contract. They sign it. There's really nothing they can do. That's a depth, you know, play. Um, you know, there's it's not a great tight end market. And so I guess from that standpoint, it, it makes sense to – to tender Brock Wright a restricted deal, so you keep control of him. Um, and I'm sorry, Gator, who was the other one that you? Well, Emmanuel Mosley was, uh, Mosley. yeah, the yeah. one-year deal and a guy that just coming off another ACL here. Yeah, you know, sort of the same thing where like you you need some depth at that position. And I know he played two defensive snaps last year, and the Lions certainly didn't get their money out of that. But you know, he's not going to cost a lot of money. Uh, that deal hadn't been filed yet, um, so I haven't seen the the exact numbers on it. But I expect there to be a big, you know, per game roster bonus to to keep the cap number down. And you know, frankly, they liked him last year. You know, he he can add something at that cornerback spot. He, he's not a number one, but if you have him and Cam Sutton, if they're both healthy, you know that that maybe looks a lot better than than you know what they entered the season with last year when when Mosley was hurt and you didn't kind of know what number two was going to be. And I will say. You know, Kendall Vildor could be back as well, and if you bring him back as like a number three, that's maybe people feel a lot better than having him start every week. Well, you know, it's a different kind of year when our last question is about your mock draft that came out yesterday, <laughs> and you went with Jackson Powers Johnson, the interior offensive lineman from Oregon, which is why, I mean, I guess it makes sense that if you think one of the guards, is, only one is for sure coming back, that, that this pick would, first of all, he's a talented player by all yeah. accounts and would fit right in. Yeah, and you know that that's exactly what it came down to for me, Doug. Is is I do I think you know ultimately the Lions will be able to keep one of those guards, maybe not two, and beyond that, like it's just it's a wise investment for this team given the way that they've built. I wrote a little bit about this today and kind of why I made that choice. Um, that they invest more in the offensive line right now at this stage of of where they are as a as a program because you're going to have to pay Panay Sewell a contract that's going to make him the highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL, let's say next year. You know, Frank Rag now injury concerns, really good player, but who knows how long he, his body holds up. Taylor Decker entering the last year of his deal, so you got to pay him a big money contract if you want to keep him around. Um, so, you know, look, if, if you're investing all that money into your offensive line, at some point, you got to have a young guy on a very cost control contract. And if you can get a pretty good one at the end of round one this year, whether it's Jackson Powers Johnson or someone else, I think that just makes a lot of sense for the Lions to do at number 29. Last question for me. They have uh, seven weeks before this draft. Are you getting a sense that there is any player that the Lions covet? Man, um, I think it's way too early for that. Um, you know, I only spent a couple of days in Indianapolis last week, and I, I sort of bailed before the offensive linemen, um, you know, talked and, and their drills. And, you know, the Lions wrapped up their, their formal interviews last Thursday, I think. So I don't even know how many offensive linemen they brought in. I think that is another thing that will play itself out here. But ultimately, you guys know Brad by now. Like, he's just going to take the best player on his board and – you know, whatever position that is, if that's the the seventeenth ranked player and he's able to get him at twenty nine, that's the guy that he's going to covet, and that's the guy that'll come in and play a role for the Lions at whatever position. And then he's going to tell us about it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave. remind us a couple years later. <laughs> yeah. we said about him, uh, Dave. That's right. They win, they can do that. That's right. Yes. Dave Burkett, Detroit Free Press, RemaFreep dot com. Follow him on Twitter. Do appreciate your time. Thank you very much, and we'll talk soon.